Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. We are following breaking news out of Western New York where author Salman Rashid has been attacked on stage as he was about to give a lecture. An Associated Press reporter witnessed a man storm the stage and begin punching or stabbing him as he was being introduced. We are told that the man was restrained and that Rashid's condition is not known at this time. The venue has been evacuated. The 75-year-old author's writing led to death threats from Iran in the 1980s after he wrote the satanic verses. Also breaking this noon, a Westland man has been charged in connection to the murder of an 18-year-old from Grand Blanc. Avion Sanders is now charged with first-degree murder and the death of 18-year-old Jacob Hills. Prosecutors say that the two left a party in Detroit together last month. They say that Sanders then killed Hills, stole his AR-15 gun, and left his body in the basement of a home on West Warren Street. Hills had just graduated from from Grand Blanc High School and was missing for days before his body was found. Testimony continues today in the second trial for the two men accused of plotting to kidnap Governor Whitmer. An FBI agent has been on the stand in the trial of Adam Fox and Barry Croft Jr. That agent is being grilled on how the agency uses confidential informants. Our Sean Lay has been there listening in on all of the developments. What's the update this noon, Sean? The update is actually behind closed doors right now, Rhonda. The situation is developing with the judge and a member of this jury. The judge says he is investigating a member of the jury that before jury selection, this person was called for jury duty and may have told others that they wanted to be on this particular jury for the Whitmer trial. That is a problem, but the judge says he's handling everything about it right now behind closed doors. The U.S. District Judge presiding over the Whitmer kidnapping retrial filing this restricted access order today looking to take control of an issue raised by the attorney for defendant Barry Croft that there already may be misconduct by a juror. The trial is only in its third day of testimony misconduct that could bring the trial to a screeching halt. Judge Robert Yonker outlining the situation by writing that he has been addressing a juror issue behind closed doors. An investigation into the alleged misconduct is underway and the judge spoke with that juror but apparently without prosecutors and defense attorneys present at that meeting. It's a juror issue Judge Yonker describes as a fluid and unfolding situation but an issue that the judge wants to handle outside of the public courtroom. Judge Yonker writing quote for now the court expects to continue addressing the situation in non-public hearings and filings while the case is pending to limit the risk of mis trial. Back here live, nothing in the judge's filing indicated that he removed this juror and put in an alternate right now. So for all intents and purposes, this particular juror under investigation is right in that jury box right now. Rhonda, you also mentioned these confidential informants working for the FBI. We're working on more of this story uh, for later on uh, Local 4 News starting at 4 and 5 o'clock. And to one of the uh, informants, uh, the FBI admitting today on the stand, smoked marijuana with these defendants and one also slept in the same bed as defendant Barry Croft, why they said that was happening. We have that for you. Those details at five o'clock. Back to you. All right. We look forward to those updates later today, Sean. Thank you. In the meantime, we want to talk to Paul about our forecasts and these cooler, more comfortable temperatures. Paul. I'll tell you what, this is a fine, finally Friday. We are looking at temperatures now rising nicely. 77 in Detroit, same thing in West Bloomfield. 74 Livonia, 72 Canton, 74 Metro, Mount Clemenger at 74. Sterling Heights lagging behind a little bit there at 71 degrees. In our south zone, 74 Carlton, 73 Dundee, 76 over in Saline. And in our west zone, we have 72 in Whitmore Lake. Milford, you're at 71. Howell, you're at 72 degrees. And in our north zone, uh, even in the north zone, we're warm and nicer. We're in the low 70s in some spots. Emmett at 69 degrees. Okay, but Deckerville's at 71, 75 at Melvin, 70 right now 
over in Oxford. All right, you see all the sunshine here, a lot of clear sky, but you see some clouds starting to build to the west, and some of those clouds are leaking. So as we get into the weekend, we have some issues with the computer models. They're still in disagreement, but I'm starting to figure some things out. So coming up in about 10, 15 minutes, we'll talk about the timing of our weekend rain, and we'll try and help you plan your plans around that rain. But for this afternoon, no problems. Hey, the Lions. They're starting things off with the first uh, preseason game, and it is going to be perfect for the tailgate. I mean, absolutely perfect. 80 around the uh, start of the tailgate, falling through the 70s during the game. I'll be back again with that uh, weekend update in just a few minutes. Okay, we're looking forward to your update. Thank you, Paul. Meanwhile, Detroit police were fired upon in two separate incidents. In one incident, shots were fired at police officers multiple times from someone moving in a moving truck through southwest Detroit. Officers chased that truck to the Southfield Service Drive and West Outer Drive in Allen Park. We're told that a 14-year-old was just released from jail two days ago and was driving that truck. An adult was firing shots out of the back window. Enough's enough. We, we got to do something with uh, the back end of our criminal justice system. We can't keep locking up these people that are danger to our, our community, the citizens. And then just two nights later, we're back involved here. They were both arrested along with another teenager. In another incident, police need your help. Looking for a man who shot at Detroit police officers on Thursday night. The area where it happened is near the Lodge Freeway in McNichols and Bur and Burwood. Police say that they heard shots firing at another vehicle and tried to make a traffic stop. Three men inside of the car then made a run for it and crashed into this church before taking off on foot. One suspect then ask a mother arriving home with her children to let him ride in her home, let him hide in her home. That's when she said no, and he took off in her SUV. Again, police are still looking for the man who shot at officers and stole this woman's car. Former President Trump said that he is encouraging the immediate release of documents connected to the search on his Mar-a-Lago home in Florida. The warrant could be unsealed as early as today. The former president said that he does not oppose a federal court in Florida unsealing a search warrant. According to the Washington Post, the search is tied to nuclear weapons. Trump's statement came after Attorney General Merrick Garland has asked a judge to release information from the warrant and details about what was seized. The department filed the motion to make public the warrant and receipt in light of the former president's public confirmation of the search, the surrounding circumstances, and the substantial public interest in this matter. Trump's legal team has until 3 o'clock this afternoon to formally respond in court to the Justice Department's filing. GM's Lake Orion assembly plant reopened this morning after a murder uh, inside of that plant happened on Thursday. And we are expecting to learn about possible charges later today. Investigators say the 48-year-old cleaning contractor got into a fight with another contractor. 49-year-old Gregory Robertson was found on the floor bleeding from his head. He was rushed to the hospital, but that is where he later died. Robertson's wife told us that he worked the overnight shift at the plant for the past seven months. And police in Redford Township are looking for two men after a hit and run involving a six-year-old boy. They say that the child was riding his bike near Vassar and Brady when he was hit by a blue 2012 Chevy Impala. The car was abandoned at the scene and two men ran off. We're told that the little boy is in critical condition. Police are asking any witnesses to come forward. They are looking for home security video that might help them identify the suspects. Turning to Dearborn Heights, where police are searching for a driver who ran into a church and then took off, literally driving right into it and causing a lot of damage. There you see the damaged vehicle and the damage to the Family Worship Center on Pelham and Annapolis. Now police are saying that the driver of the SUV hit the church and then got into another car and left the scene. We're working to learn more about the circumstances. And a judge declares a mistrial in a civil lawsuit in the Flint water crisis. The jury could not reach a verdict over whether two engineering firms should bear some responsibility for Flint's lead contaminated water. The lawsuit was brought by four people who were children at the time. They claimed that the two companies did not do enough to get the Flint 
get Flint to treat the water. Attorneys for the company say that they were lumped in with bad actors, saying that state and local officials controlled the major decisions about the water. The trial can be held again with a different jury. So to come here on your Friday, we are following news out of Oakland County after an invasive species was just found for the first time here in Michigan, and it could threaten our crops of grapes. Plus, new recommendations coming from the CDC. We're going to explain the big change when it comes to quarantining for COVID.